Well, thanks, uh, Vandana, for the introduction. I think, uh, as Sundar mentioned and uh, as Vandana mentioned, I'll be largely talking of innovation in uh, traditional uh, indigenous systems of health. Uh, while I'll be talking uh, in general frame of Ayush, I'll be mostly referring to Ayurveda, uh, to be very precise, because otherwise it gets very complex. And what I am talking is about for people-oriented sustainable healthcare technology, which could go a step further from Ayurveda, the organized knowledge systems, to the decentralized local health traditions. I think that will be important. Uh, my scheme of presentations, the first time, uh, just trying to give a very quick overview of the Indian paradigm of health, largely with the Ayurvedic and the local health traditions framework. And then I'll try to quickly cover the current status and state of affairs even in the government system of Ayush, et cetera, mm -hmm. and uh, the priorities that they have kind of put in the way things are happening. And then in terms of way forward, uh, there are two instances. One is the National Knowledge uh, Council, uh, the Innovation Council, the way it is looking at things and where they are uh, putting uh, the uh, traditional innovations. And what I thought I would suggest a few uh, approaches. If you look at the Indian healthcare paradigm, uh, of the Ayurveda, it is Swastas Swastha Raksham, which means that uh, the focus must be on preserving the health and treating only if necessary. That's the first, first and the foremost issue, which is usually lost. As Sundar said, the entire focus is on medicines, delivery of technology, curative. Unfortunately, even in Ayurveda and traditional systems, that's happening today. That even there, the focus on public health, on preventive, etc., is largely lost, and that's a very basic issue. And if you look at this health, the definition of health is very broad definition. It talks about samdosha, samagnisha, that slog is not important. What it talks is equilibrium of body in, in, the, in its entirety, from its functioning to its physical uh, tissue uh, status to its uh, mental, intellectual, spiritual situation of prasannat mendri mana. Your mind should be happy. Your spirit should be happy and your uh, uh, indriyas should be happy, which means all your physical senses should be happy. That kind of a wide definition of health, only healthy people, they have to be looked after to remain healthy. That's the focus which I thought is important. And this can only be achieved if you have uh, both physical and socio-economic well-being uh, uh, to be ensured. Without socio-economic well-being being ensured, intellectual, spiritual, and mental, and uh, that... Uh, uh, balance or uh, happiness is impossible. So I think that's an important uh, framework which I am trying to put forth. Now, if you look at the scientific and technological strengths of the innovations in this Ayush and uh, local health traditions, uh, the focus is on decentralized healthcare innovations, uh, let's say in food and nutrition. In food and nutrition, something which people are not able to perceive, look at the entire country across the spectrum from hills to coastal areas, to arid regions of Rajasthan to uh, trop I mean, tropical or to uh, other areas, the cooking habits, the food preparation, the condiments, the decentralized knowledge available with the household lady is enormous with the kind of uh, preparation that they should make, the condiments she should use, and uh, the how she should manage the nutrition. Now, this uh, spread of knowledge was not incidental. It was deliberate. It was organized. And because that was the priority. The priority was health, not cure. That paradigm shift makes all the difference. Uh, if you look at the diet according to your temperament, you, you should not eat everything. Every child in the house was told, you should eat this, you should not eat this. That knowledge, decentralized availability of knowledge, and that innovation was very important for health. Again, you know, look at uh, the component from health. Or the food intake, the quantity you must eat, the quality of food, at where should you eat? What time should you eat? You know, such great details of food intake systems have component of health rather than cure. That, that has to be, I'm kind of emphasizing every time. Then Viruddhahar, what should be eaten with what? And what should not be eaten with what? This entire concept is, again, I'm emphasizing on health and not disease. The disease is the repercussion. Pathya, pathya. You know, in, in a disease condition or when you are recovering from a disease, what should you take, what you should not take? Again, that, the entire focus I'm repeating again. Then Anupana, that concept of food and the drug or the medicine uh, is an important concept which is there in uh, Ayurveda, for example. 
Now, if you look at the decentralized innovations in prevention and promotion again, similarly, that nutrition was just one very major component which takes care of healthcare innovations. Ritucharya and Dincharya, the, the, the regimens that you should follow every day from morning till evening and in every season, changing season. Again, focuses on health, not cure. And the role of Purva Karmas and Panch Karmas in managing your you know, daily uh, routines of various things in case you are uh, likely to fall ill. The entire maternal and child care, Garbhani, Paricharya, Masanu Masik, every month what should the, the pregnant woman do in such great detail? Now, again, so that the pregnant woman should remain healthy and deliver a healthy child. That antenatal concept was far, far more old. And in the promotive, the yoga sanas, the pranayams, the exercises and dietary regimen, health promoting regimen in every season. Then the sanskaras with festivals. Every region of the country, there are different festivals. And in every festival, the food recipes are different. And these food recipes are for keeping you healthy. Now, those kind of innovations are so widespread across the country, and that's important. Then there are sinas, which are more uh, detailed. And all this is with a worldview. This is not, uh, uh, you know, in isolation. The worldview is of the uh, oriental Sankhya philosophy of India, wherein you talk of yat pinde tad brahmande, which means that the way your body is, it has direct relationship with the cosmos or the universe. The implication is, that uh, you must encourage biodiversity and sustain biodiversity. Because if you disturb the cosmos, you disturb yourself. If you disturb yourself, you will disturb the cosmos. Then it talks about uh, localized use of uh, medicines in case you uh, fall sick. That the deshe the, esminjara. You know, if you are in a particular region, you need not go and take standardized formulations of medicines from, you know, imported from even another part of the country. That the medicinal plants which are found in your region would largely take care of your routine healthcare problems was a focus again to ensure distribution, sustainability, innovation in that context is important. The promotive and preventive nutrition aspects therefore also sustain biodiversity and help conserve biodiversity. Now with despite all the distortions, pre-independence and post-independence, there was an NHRC study, Ritu Priya probably would be talking much more in detail, but I'm just uh, highlighting with this slide that despite all the neglect and everything, even today, that's in 2010, that is the state of affairs, something like 80 to 100 percent people, 50 to 70 percent people are aware of its uses, they have the knowledge, they have the understanding, and that these have been validated knowledge, that, that, that knowledge is not distorted, there are distortions, but a lot of that knowledge, even today is a validated knowledge. But despite all that innovation, there's a thorough neglect. Even allopathic practitioners in this country feel that they have a lot to offer and they must be encouraged. And they, then they even encourage their practice in many situations. Now, that kind of situation, what are the major, now I'll come to the status of the, the, the uh, innovations in the country. Which are the major R&D institutions? The National Institutes of Ayurveda, Yunani and Siddha. The Gujarat Ayurveda University uh, has some R&D programs. Rajasthan, not yet. The Central Research Councils. Then the departments of Ayush and pharmacy in some universities. And then agencies like CSR, ICMR, etc., etc. These are the, uh, the, the players who are involved with the research or innovation in uh, the situation. Now, if you look at the uh, priorities or the objectives defined by Ayush department. Now, what are the uh, priorities? The entire priority is global. The entire priority, the entire objective of the Ayush department is global concerns. It starts with develop evidence-based uh, efficacy of Ayush drugs so that you can market it globally. Generate data on safety, etc. Again, market it globally. Facilitate validation. Again, market it. So the entire focus of Ayush is not because people need it in this country. It's because you can market it globally. So your entire approach is again curative and marketing globally. And, and the entire set of things. Now, look at the research priorities once again, as in this website of uh, Ayush departments. Diabetes mentis, peptic ulcer, psoriasis. There are only three, four areas, malnutrition, preventive cardiology, and cardiology, hypertension, obesity. Again, uh, how much of it is global and how much of it is national is an issue. General health promotion, Rasayana, Medha Rasayana. Again, a lot of that is uh, global, though it uh, does refer to preventive and uh, promotive to certain extent. 
and primary health care relating issues get a very low priority in the entire scheme of things and these are the first priority items what are the second priority items the second research, uh, research priority areas diarrhea including dysentery get in the second priority even a much lower priority where there is a strength in ayurveda and ayush systems but the government itself the ccrh ayush department gives it a very low priority secondary and tertiary healthcare relating issues last priority even in the second priority now that is the kind of priorities the government system today is assigning to these last priorities of rnd identification and evaluation of promising and widely accepted practices preventive promoted these are the last priorities of the ayush department now which should be the top priorities of ayush department are the last priorities of the ayush department that is the status indian council of medical research has been involved earlier it still is involved to some extent and they do spend some amount of money and medicinal plants there are about 16 projects in in the three years period that i have analyzed and uh, out of the 16 there are four uh, five for quality standards standardization and uh, four for diabetes so out of 16 and two for carcinoma about something like uh, 11 are for high priority western oriented market so where is the national priority where is the health priority for the people mch four out of 15 and these three studies are part of a task uh, coordinated project to study the impact of home delivery in the population and all the three uh, studies have very positively reported in favor of home delivery by the traditional practitioners but the repercussion is that incentive will be only to the institutional delivery and therefore eliminate the dies so the, the the outcome from a research priority is not used in the policy making that then there is politics and other consideration is reinforced by this fact and uh, so on and so forth and something like anti viral out of 27 projects none in traditional medicine whereas anti viral is an area where uh, medicinal plants have much stronger uh, uh, contribution probably to make even in orthopedics the traditional orthopedics has a lot to offer wound healing etc but nothing is happening because your priorities are different i just put one slide for chinese comparison now if you look at chinese comparison they were at the same stage they started with us they started later than us they they started promoting in in 75 78 in that area but what they did was they uh, i mean I, i don't want to go into the anecdotal details of how mao cut down the budget of allopathic system by 50% at one stroke of time when the <coughs> allopathic people were not listening to to the priorities being given to the traditional chinese medicine and that turned the tables totally in 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 something like 79 uh, mao changed and they said the unused budget of the traditional chinese medicine will not be able to available to allopathy they had to survive with 50% and the result is even today something like 45% of the chinese healthcare budget goes to traditional chinese medicine that made all the difference and the rest is other details like uh, setting up institutions and sections in healthcare institutions and chain of research laboratories and quality control etc and focus on a few selected herbal uh, and uh, products and the, that's the impact not only for the healthcare of the chinese uh, uh, population but also in terms of herbal medicine industry globally they have more than 25% share in the global market now what is the the situation that our nkc is proposing our nkc says innovation is one of the key factors in india's economic growth value enhancement for commercial activity significant factor in facilitating competitiveness again industry complex activity requires interaction the entire focus is on corporate on industry innovation for industry innovation for promoting commercial competitiveness and commerce so the entire focus is not on people is on on trade and commerce and industry even the survey talks about industry the innovation uh, the status of innovation survey that was conducted and the priority that they are talking of large firms small firms what is happening etc but nobody is talking of what is the innovation happening at the grassroots national innovation council is no interest no concern because the priority is and even public sector r and d not even consideration for uh, national innovation council that's a, a mindset and the framework which one must be clearly aware the 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 problems that they identify lack of interaction rigid compartmentalization uh, within the sciences uh, lack of long term vision 
lack of differential remuneration to, you know, these are all tinkering issues of the institutions and nothing more than that. Outside institutional framework, there is nothing to be talked about uh, so far as Innovation Council is concerned. Then they propose a, a, a National Science and Social Sciences Foundation to be established so that the interaction between sciences and social sciences, very good words. But again, at the most for institutional reforms and no uh, thinking about how to spread your net wide enough for the country to tap innovations. That is totally lost in the National Innovation Council's framework. If you look at the knowledge Swaraj paradigm that one is talking about, that uh, needs to be kind of promoted. The, the paradigm of indi indigenous knowledge traditions has a background. It has, it has a background I would like to just highlight to you. When Britishers came to India in the late 17th century and early 18th century, the literacy rate in England was 23-24%. The literacy rate in India at that time was 90% plus, as quoted by Dharampal from the British archives. A country which had 90% plus literacy rate, and what was the literacy rate? People in different sectors not only knew re how to read and write, but also used the knowledge that they had, the farmers, the artisans, the health practitioners. But when the Britishers left in uh, 1947, it was reversed. The literacy rate in India was 23%. It was in England 90% plus. Because the literacy rate had nothing to do with the actual activity that they were performing. And they had to be through an educational system which was irrelevant to them. So the entire innovation process was killed in this country by the education system. And post-independence, we've done nothing. Look at what Gandhi does, 1932, what uh, uh, Anil Gupta was referring yesterday. He, he called all the top people from C.V. Raman to J.C. Bose to Meghna Saha to all these characters. And what did he talk about? They all unanimously recommended that we should talk of innovation for village industries development, involving artisans. And the only museum that Gandhi encouraged to set up in, was in Varda called Magan Sangrahale to identify the products made by traditional artisans across the country. Why? Because that's where the innovation lies and announced that uh, price that Anil was referring to yesterday. And in that context, if you look at the healthcare, what, what is the strength? It uses locally uh, available materials, various forms combinations. And even in the localized practices that were there of surgery, bone setting, leeches, inoculation in West Bengal, elsewhere, cauterization, etc., etc., there were decentralized practices even in surgery. Jarrah used to be there in my younger childhood days, handling very, very complex uh, situations, all lost. Uh, what are the major concerns? I'll just take two more minutes. I'm last two, three slides. Major national concerns are because of the system, lack of self-confidence and therefore a leadership crisis in the system. They are losing basic framework and inherent strengths. They have been forced to kind of lose them because even their own system doesn't uh, encourage that. And they are losing resource base. They have lost their educational infrastructure. They, they neglect in mainstream healthcare system, uh, little R&D infrastructure support and inadequate political administrative support I put last. It should be actually at the top, these are the, and these are the challenges all of you are knowing much better, uh, uh, which includes the technological subservience and dominant budgetary support to allopathy. But the unfortunate challenge is also commercial model promoted even in Ayush. Even Ayush is promoting a commercial model which will not help uh, these systems to, to do develop uh, uh, innovation. Now, in, in the way forward, uh, uh, the proposed innovation framework that I'm talking of sustainability, for, for sustainability, plural, plurality and justice, or for diversity and distribution, or for equitable access by decentralized innovation and production systems, uh, to restrict uh, consumption and control of commons. Uh, that has to be uh, kind of taken along with these uh, systems, so that a model of self-land development with public participation can be developed. And a few priority areas could be the local traditions, particularly threatened and uh, to study the contemporary uh, dravyas or the uh, materials that are available or in use. And validation with Ayush framework, not the Ayush framework of the Department of, the, of Ayush, but Ayush framework in its theoretical uh, paradigm. Uh, in some areas, for example, wound dealing, health promoting herbs, etc., there's plenty of knowledge available spread out uh, across the country. 
then threatened uh, uh, people like danta vaidyas netra vaidyas bone setters uh, vishu vaidyas etc they need to be kind of identified and their innovations need to be taken up more. even in allied areas like mrugayurved the veterinary component of it rukshayurved totally neglected they need to be taken up they have very strong potentials then decentralized conservation production and distribution systems now the approach that i am uh, proposing is that uh, uh, the issues that i have already kind of mentioned uh, uh, approach and methodology the approach has to be uh, restore educational systems with traditional pedagogy i'll just give an anecdotal example here of jeevak today with best of the bio botanical and chemical uh, understanding we do not know more than about 30 to 35000 uh, plant species globally and jeevak a scientist uh, in uh, bc 5 3 400 bc uh, when he was graduated he was sent around uh, there's a story that go around uh, 10 kilometers in that area and find if there's any herb any plant which is not useful the fellow spent one week 10 days around and came back sir i can't find any plant which doesn't have medicinal use so the fellow knew thousands and thousands of medicinal plants all the plants available in the vicinity of, of up to about 10 kilometers that 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 he knew the uses of those plants and today with the best of understanding and laboratories globally we don't know more than 30 35000 plants even in terms of basic understanding medicinal understanding not more than some 700 800 plants the fellow knew several thousand plants that was the system of education now that needs to be uh, restored in terms of innovation uh, development and interaction between grassroots level and health practitioners has to be organized while encouraging the 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 weaker ones and dialogue between western and modern these are some of the areas that one has proposed if you want to set up some centers of excellence i have proposed uh, some institutional uh, mechanisms right from block level to district level to division level to state level and at the national level that uh, what kind of activities can be taken up at different levels to to kind of from documentation to analysis and validation in their framework so that while conservation can be taken uh, care of the innovation can be taken care of and uh, promoted thank you